What do you want them to know? That in the late 1980s, the U.S. government had recovered alien spacecraft, several of them, and the technology in the Nevada desert that they were keeping quiet and analyzing. Although the government has long held the position that we are alone and has worked to sway public opinion in this direction, humans have long entertained the possibility that aliens exist. Fortunately, physicist Bob Lazar has chosen not to comply and has spoken out about his knowledge of extraterrestrial life. What lies beyond Area 51's walls? What is it that the government wishes to remain a secret? Join us as we delve into Bob Lazar and the latest UFO sightings. Bob Lazar, the early whistleblower. A man by the name of Bob Lazar came out of the shadows in the late 1980s with claims that would have an impact not only on the UFO community, but also outside of it, according to Lazar, who claimed to have worked for a hidden government facility called S-4, which is situated close to the notorious Area 51 at Groom Lake, Nevada. Lazar claimed to have worked on reverse engineering alien technology from this location. Lazar's early statements were extremely dramatic. Declaring that they were alien-made, he gave descriptions of nine distinct spacecraft. One craft, which he called the Sport Model, was propelled by a reactor that employed an element not yet recognized by the general scientific community. To strengthen his claims, Lazar claimed that Element 115 could produce anti-gravity effects, enabling the spacecraft to perform movements outside the bounds of accepted physics. Lazar talked about the division of labor at S-4, arguing that teams operated in isolated compartments with access to only their projects and information, making it challenging to understand the activities comprehensively. The greatest privacy was intended to be ensured by this style of operation. Lazar's stories offered a structure and detail absent from UFO reports. This individual not only professed to have seen UFOs, but also claimed to have worked on them. He provided location specifics, technical data, and even an event timeline. His disclosures contributed to the public's growing need for openness over what many perceive to be long-standing government secrets about extraterrestrial encounters. But Lazar's announcements did more than just spark excitement. They also brought an uproar of doubt. His story was immediately criticized for having issues from his educational background to the accuracy of some locations he described. Using element 115 as fuel for interstellar travel caused concern in the physics community, especially as many believed it to be practically impossible given the attributes known at the time. But what Lazar accomplished was amazing, despite the critics. He gave the UFO debate fresh life and drive by adding new vocabulary. Before Lazar, Conversations had focus points like Element 115 and Area 51, where Area 51 was a little-known military facility that even ordinary people could grasp. It became entangled with alien folklore after Lazar, leading journalists, UFO lovers, and curious bystanders to get as close as they dared in the hopes of seeing something supernatural. In addition, Lazar's whistleblower style made him appear to be a defender of the truth, willing to risk his safety to reveal potentially revolutionary facts. The Mysterious Element 115 Despite being a new addition to the periodic table in 2016, Element 115 has received significant attention for decades due to rumors of its possible link to alien technology and life forms. Bob said that Element 115 could create a force field that the spaceship could use for power if used appropriately. He claimed that this was how these crafts accomplished the seemingly impossible by manipulating the laws of known physics. It was discovered that Element 115, as stated by Lazar, did not exist naturally on Earth and was given to the facility in batches for its research. According to Lazar, the element produced gravity in a spacecraft reactor. The craft could take off and move with incredible speed and agility after this wave was increased for motion. It appears that the conversations on S-4 and Element 115 went beyond the circles of conspiracy theorists and UFO fans. They extended further into scientific and popular culture circles. Some were fascinated by Lazar's deep descriptions, but others were suspicious, seeing it as a fortress of secrets where the greatest discoveries in human history were being made. It was a work of fiction, a story spun from fantasy and partial reality. 
In Bob Lazar's view, the S-4 site symbolizes the mystery and controversy surrounding Groom Lake, Nevada's wide and intriguing area. On the side of the more well-known Area 51, this secret place was the vocal point of some of the most secretive extraterrestrial stuff, as revealed to Lazar. Lazar's descriptions of S-4 portrayed a society in which it was important to avoid letting science interfere too much with the private lives of individuals. Lazar's tale brings us to S-4, the home of nine flying saucers with unique features and stylish characteristics. Lazar stated these were for standards of function, not for showing off or storage purposes. He often recounted how they normally stayed in hangar bays with hidden entrances in the mountainside so that they could not be seen from above or below. If accurate, this claim meant that the person responsible for S-4 intended to reverse engineer these craft and perhaps test and use them. Adding element 115 to the UFO debate was likely the most fascinating of all the findings connected to S-4. Lazar asserted that this previously unidentified component was secret to these extraterrestrial craft's driving mechanisms. Lazar's claims had far-reaching consequences. If verified, these statements imply that the U.S. government, or a secret organization inside it, has technological capabilities centuries, if not millennia, ahead of what is now understood by humans. It made us speculate that there were other intelligent beings than us in the universe, and that the governments of the Earth planet held real artifacts from other worlds. Although many questions regarding Project S-4, Element 115, the alien's craft, and the details of Lazar's story became grounds for controversy. Each person shared their own version of events separately, having a firm belief in the story. On this theme, some still believed this was a mere invention. S-4 and Element 115's narratives raised new questions about space technology and extraterrestrial lives. They aroused the men's curiosity and made them think just what was obtained in the universe and the limits of the human ambition to cover up such secrets. Lazar story, which was still secret together with the mysterious S-4 and undefined element 115, left the known history of the hunt for extraterrestrial reality and started the period of interest, skepticism, and hope in this field. The Shadows That Lurk in the Nevada Desert The not-so-secret military facility, Area 51, is located in the Nevada desert and has played a major role in numerous conspiracy theories. Because there has never been enough evidence to support these allegations, many people think that Area 51 has been harboring extraterrestrial life behind its carefully guarded gates for a very long time. The existence of extraterrestrial life in Area 51 is still considered to be a conspiracy. This is unsurprising, given the secrecy surrounding the site and its operations. Situated in southern Nevada, Area 51 is a highly classified military outpost. The Lake Edwards Air Force Base manages the base's operations. Even though all the evidence points to the site being nothing more than a facility for flight testing, there has been conjecture about extraterrestrial life there. The numerous reports of UFO encounters near the base over the years are one of the main causes of this. Because Area 51 was marked on the maps produced by the Atomic Energy Commission, the military base was given that name. Area 51 is well known for being the site of numerous advanced aircraft tests conducted by U.S. military and intelligence agencies. This facility has been used to test several stealth aircraft, bombers, jets, and drones. Whatever the base approves will undoubtedly be the best. This mysterious institution also researches weapons systems and radar systems for aircraft. The intense secrecy surrounding the facility has given rise to several myths and theories, the most well-known of which is that the location is home to an alien spaceship and the bodies of its pilots, who perished in a crash in Roswell, New Mexico. It is reported that the authorities quickly cleared the wreckage, transported the bodies to Area 51 for reverse engineering, and examined them. Rumor has it that active communication and collaboration with extraterrestrial life forms occur at Area 51. Additionally, some believe that holographic projections of extreme religious events or fake extraterrestrial abductions have been provided to the U.S. government by these life forms. Maybe this is where the notion of the Illuminati and other cults inspired by religion and Satan originated. The U.S. government is thought to have access to parallel universes and different realities through Area 51, which is thought to act as a doorway to other dimensions. However, the U.S. government has never acknowledged these claims as fact or acknowledged that there may be alien technology in Area 51 or even that these extraterrestrial lifeforms exist. 
Even after the government put an end to all allegations regarding Area 51 and its involvement in anything that involves alien people or technology, or even anything outside of its regular testing and research activities to strengthen national security and defense, the government has categorically denied any involvement in activities involving sightings of unidentified flying objects or extraterrestrial life forms. Hawkeye observers and conspiracy theories haven't stopped focusing on this facility. They search for anything that even slightly resembles a small green man. Several kilometers south of Area 51, this even more secret area is marked. Here, Bob Lazar discloses that he was hired in the late 1980s to reverse engineer extraterrestrial technology. His revelation has reignited interest in this subject and sparked discussions about it among the broader public. Bob Lazar disclosed that he was hired to work on a project named Galileo, which involved the reverse engineering of extraterrestrial spacecraft at a facility known as S-4. He claimed that Teller, a seasoned physicist and one of the pioneers in developing the hydrogen bomb, had recruited him. It's said that S-4 is located roughly 15 miles south of Area 51. Bob Lazar asserted that he was granted access to examine the Sport model, an alien spacecraft that ran on an anti meta reactor that used Element 115 as fuel. He added that he had studied briefing papers from the U.S. administration, in which it was stated that for the previous 10,000 years, alien life had been involved in human affairs. Lazar's frequent appearances in interviews captured the public's curiosity about the true nature of Area 51. Lazar has participated in multiple podcasts and interviews where he gradually divulges more information about his work as an employee of this S-4 facility. He says he's seen multiple of these alien spacecraft's test flights. He disclosed that the spaceship executed various movements that went against numerous rules of physics, such as hovering, accelerating, and disappearing. When Lazar was interviewed by George Knepp, who was working for KISS Television Las Vegas at the time, in 1989, he first gained recognition. In the beginning, Bob wanted to stay secret. He spoke only in shadow and went by the nickname Dennis. After a while, he emerged from hiding completely and went by his official name instead of adopting a fake identity. Lazar made some serious accusations against the U.S. government and made some unbelievable stories about how the U.S. government owned nine spacecraft that had crashed or been taken prisoner on another planet. He said one of these nine spacecraft had a saucer-like shape, just like the ones in the movies. Bob goes on to say that he was a member of a team that the government hired to reverse engineer this spacecraft to provide American scientists with the propulsion secrets they needed to reach the stars. Bob Lazar continued to make accusations about being sacked from the top secret military facility because, one evening, he had supposedly led a group of friends into the desert close to Area 51 base to see a source of one of the test flights secretly. As the group attempted to flee the base, a Lincoln County constable apprehended them and reported them to the authorities. Some of the test flights Lazar had seen had been discussed. He said that during that test flight, every one of the nine spacecraft he had observed was operating at maximum efficiency and had not experienced any malfunctions. He did see that one of the flying disks appeared to have been struck by a flying object. He also saw that the metal on the spacecraft appeared bent out of shape and had a sizable hole in the top. Lazar believed that that ship had come from somewhere else that was not Earth. Inspired by this insight, Bob looked closely inside the flying disc and saw something unusual. The furniture gave it away. The chairs on the vessel were too small to accommodate a small person. According to Lazar, a few of these extraterrestrial spacecraft were destroyed to learn how the engineering functioned and to better adapt to advances made in human aircraft. Bob continued by discussing another exam he had the honor of seeing. He said the underside of the airplane hissed and glowed blue like high voltage on a spherical sphere. Lazar believed the aircraft's design effectively avoided sharp edges to contain the enormous voltage. He stated that the exam was brief. All that occurred was a liftoff of the airplane to an altitude of 20 to 30 feet. It took a few passes to land, and although it was only a brief test flight, Lazar said he was shocked that the aircraft could lift off the ground without emitting any exhaust gas to indicate that fuel was used for all intended functions. According to Lazar, the aircraft's levitation could have been magic since these spacecraft were never intended for use on any flying missions to Jupiter. He insisted 
that he was greatly disappointed by the extreme caution and severe secrecy surrounding these explorations, since he did not understand why they would not share these efforts with the scientific community. He thought it was unjust because he believed the community was better equipped to handle some knowledge. If the whole project had not been shrouded in secret, they most likely would have advanced much further with the experiments. Lazar further criticized the need for more wisdom in continuing the projects. Kept under wraps, since the desert facility required additional space to conduct a thorough analysis of the material they would be handling. Jean Huff, one of Lazar's closest friends, had told of the pressure Bob was under from the military. He said that his wife's life had been threatened by the frequent random security inspections that had passed by his home. Huff is only an appraiser of real estate and is not a scientist in the slightest. It had only recently occurred to him that his friend was a part of the S-4 program. Following his friend's engagement in the project for a while, Lazar wants everyone to know that he revealed the government's secret because he felt it shouldn't be kept that secret. Rather, he did so out of compassion. While it was reasonable to keep some aspects of the process hidden from the public, it was unwise to conceal the entire procedure from view, given that the long-standing question of whether or not humans are alone has finally found a solution. The Media Influence in Spreading Lazar's Story We are constantly exposed to news from the media, whether on television, in newspapers, or on social media, from the moment we get up until the moment we go to bed. Because of this, the media is extremely powerful in influencing our thoughts on a wide range of subjects, including politics, entertainment, and more. In a day when news spreads quickly, stories may be altered by the flick of a tweet, blog post, or television program. The role of the media in advancing Bob Lazar's narrative. It is impossible to overestimate the impact on world consciousness and Lazar's stories about secret government outposts and extraterrestrial craft were fascinating. His claims rose from the outskirts to the center of public conversation, thanks to the media's spotlight. Investigative journalist George Knapp, a well-known journalist with a reputation for accuracy, arranged Lazar's first public appearance. Their TV interviews were crucial in providing Lazar's narrative with its initial wide distribution. Lazar's variety of answers to Knapp's insightful questions produced an engaging and understandable dynamic for the general audience. Through the visual medium, which comes with the ability to combine sound, vision, and story, the mysterious and the supernatural were perfect for studies. Lazar's description of the S-4 facility, the extraterrestrial craft and the intricate consequences of Element 115 were complemented by reenactments, animated footage, and scientific appraisals. Lazar had the talent to narrate stories, and as he incorporated visual elements in doing so, the audience got into the spirit of documenting the mystery. These enlarged formulas led to accurate inquiries on the subject, and thus increased Lazar's story. This was done by challenging the laser claims with human civic assessments, historical videos, and investigative documentaries. Different voices of doubters, keen skeptics and enthusiastic believers were therefore included in the debate. Moreover, it was not easy to integrate these viewpoints of different individuals, but in the end, they gave a greater insight into the influence of jazz. Bob Lazar Area 51 and Flying Saucers was one such documentary that stood out because it examined not just Lazar's allegations, but also the man himself, his motivations, his anxieties, and the toll his discoveries caused on his personal life. The documentary encouraged viewers to go past the dramatic and consider the real consequences of whistleblowing by relating to Lazar. In addition, the internet era brought openness of speech along with it. Online forums, blogs, and social media platforms were combined with conversations, arguments, and analyses of every aspect of Lazar's narrative. Now, Physicists and armchair investigators, amateur sleuths and UFO true believers could evaluate theories, discuss evidence, and argue about the plausibility of ETI contact. Unleashed from the shackles of institutions or geography, 
these countless minds occasionally revealed previously unsuspected entanglements and disparity that had escaped the attention of the mass media. Lazar's account is on the podium of the UFO research-focused podcasts and YouTube channels almost daily. It especially happens when more information or details are disclosed. Others were analytical and used data and other facts to debunk his claims, while others affirmed the evidence and offered supportive details that might have supported his case. Of course, the fact that Lazar's story might not have gone down in history, just a fable among a select group, is altogether owing to the media involvement. While people thought it might be a local phenomenon, it quickly became a global event and a major topic in UFO folklore. It raised questions, sparked discussions, and motivated a new generation to gaze up at the stars in awe and consider the age-old query, are we alone? How the media handled the Bob Lazar story shows how influential it influences public opinion. It shows the significant influence that technology may have on the way we view the world, our beliefs, and our place within it, when it comes to the power of storytelling. My name's Bob Lazar. I'm known for working at a classified base known as S4 out in the Nevada desert near Area 51. And there, we reverse engineered alien spacecraft. Was Lazar telling the truth? Any revelation always attracts attention, but more is needed than the one made by Bob Lazar. The bolder the claim is, the deeper the research goes into it. Lazar's claims regarding element 115, extraterrestrial ships, and S4 were all true. Over time, several objections and rebuttals surfaced, casting doubt on Lazar's account of events. The first critique focused on Lazar's background personally. Surprises emerged when scientists and reporters tried to confirm Lazar's qualifications. Lazar said he attended the California Institute of Technology, Caltech, and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. However, no documentation of his presence was discovered at either establishment. To strengthen the notion of a massive cover-up, some of Lazar's supporters suggested that his records had been changed or erased to discredit him. Skeptics countered that it would be extremely unlikely for someone to completely erase all evidence of their educational background including recollections of their teachers and classmates. The fact that S-4 existed at all, even though Area 51 is recognized as a legitimate military facility, was another major source of disagreement. As stated by Lazar, no hard proof of S-4's existence has been shown. Satellite images of the claimed location have not been shown the hangar bays and buildings Lazar claimed. Opponents say that Lazar should have been able to provide precise coordinates or definite proof if he actually was at such a place. Some members of the physics community were skeptical, especially regarding his explanation of element 115 efficiency in transportation. When Moscovium, element 115's formal name, was studied and evaluation conducted, its behavior was somehow contrary to what Lazar said it would do to change gravity, which goes against accepted physics. It has a very short half and risk factors, which is why it cannot be used as a main energy source today. Moreover, there needed to be more trust in Lazar's account of the working of the UFO machinery and how it can generate waves and gravity. Many scientists judged that Lazar's version needed to include the intricacy and complexity that scientists would expect from someone who knew the basic physics concepts, especially gravity. Regarding element 115, a wave was strange and at odds with accepted scientific knowledge, and the engineered Moscovium did not fit Lazar's description. Some claimed that Lazar was referring to the naturally occurring stable isotope that had either yet to be found or was being held, concealed. They maintained that since our knowledge of elements and isotopes is always changing, seemingly unlikely theories may be true. Many people gave Lazar's statements more weight simply because he came forward even at the risk of losing everything he held dear in his career. They felt that no one, unless they were truly sure of the accuracy of their claims, would voluntarily subject themselves to such investigation and criticism. The discussion surrounding Bob Lazar's revelations is representative of the larger conversation about extraterrestrial life and UFOs. On the one hand, skeptics want concrete proof, 
while on the other, verifiable facts are required. In the middle are those open to possibilities and waiting for that unquestionable proof that might tip the scales and believers who are frequently motivated by a combination of evidence, intuition, and a deep-seated sense that we are not alone in the cosmos. Lazar's story will probably always be an issue of debate in the history of UFOs because it is full of interesting facts and confusing issues. The struggle between his supporters and opponents highlights how desperate people are to know the truth, how eager we are to find answers, and how far we will go to support or refute a story that casts doubt on our perception of reality. Deciding to make public claims that contradict accepted wisdom, stories can be very damaging to a person's mental health, particularly when they deal with issues of national security. The case of Bob Lazar, who chose to reveal his experiences at Area 51 to the entire world and himself in the future, is a very bright example of difficulties connected with being a whistleblower in the world, making so many people suspicious and mysterious with possible dangers. Lazar was thrown into the hard spotlight, where he had to face constant watching only after his name was revealed. He was subjected to the harshest criticism. His lifestyle was minutely inspected, his finances checked, his relationships studied, and his professional and academic backgrounds were questioned. I get the feeling that probably not a single aspect of his life was left untouched either. People were not only interested in getting to know Lazar and listening to his stories, they also threatened him and tried to wipe his name off public records by his recollections. He said he felt under scrutiny, scared, and hunted. These claims, however difficult to directly confirm, showed a guy living on the edge, constantly watching his back, and cautious of threats that might be hiding in the shadows. Lazar's admissions mostly affected his connections, putting aside any prospective risks. His family and relationships suffered as a result of his prominent role in one of the most strongly debated UFO accounts of the day. Some became strained, and some even broke. Isolation and trust became luxuries due to the pressures of the media and the ensuing attention. His professional life was also impacted, as his academic credentials were questioned and his statements were met with mistrust from the mainstream scientific and engineering groups, regardless of whether they were self-imposed or the result of external circumstances. Within his area of expertise, traditional job opportunities became scarce. As a result of his newfound renown and the ensuing interest in unusual materials and technologies, he did, however, move into the scientific supply sector and capitalize on this new reality. Thank you for watching. Let us know your thoughts about Bob Lazar and the UFO sightings in the comments sections below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos like this.